what if you want to create a pivot table off this data? So let's try to do that right now. We're going to take, I'm just going to select all this data and go to data in Google Sheets and then just go to insert or pivot table. And you're going to get a blank pivot table that you've seen before. And if you click on the rows or the columns in the pivot table, you'll notice that it doesn't look like the normal options that you might get for a pivot table. You see all the columns that you have in your table, which are state, metric, and then October through September 2019. So if you want to see aggregate data about the cost of the SNAP program over time, you have to in the values field, in the values section of the pivot table, you have to click on every single month and add that as an option to the pivot table, which is not very like easy to use. And more importantly, the metric, if you recall, the metric is in its own column with costs, households, and persons. So if I want to find that metric, I have to add it as a column perhaps, and then I have to filter by that metric that I'm looking at. So in this case, I want to look at um, cost. And I have to put the metric into the filter of the pivot table and then filter by cost, even look at the cost. So this is, again, not the normal way you might look at a pivot table. So what are the few things that we need to do in order to make this data ready? Now, if you look in, I'm just going to go ahead and jump to the solution really quick. In the and again, in the Google Sheet, you'll see the solution uh, for how you can structure this data. The two main things that we have to do to this data set is convert it from, right now there are, let's see, uh, 13, no, 14 different columns. And you need to consolidate that into five columns of data. So how do you do that? So you need to have the five columns that you need are state, period, cost, households, and persons. So what does the period look like? The period, anytime you see data that's spread across different time periods, like months in this case, uh, you have October, November, December. The first thing I think about with that is putting that into one column. And in this case, we're calling that the period column. And in column B of the data set, we have basically the number of the, the months organized by, just organized down, down the rows. So we have November, November, December, January, all the way down. And it's replicated a bunch of times because we're, we have the period now consolidated into, into one column. Now, the second thing that you need to do is put the metrics into its own into their own columns. So before we had costs, households, and persons as individual rows in the original data set. Now in the solution, we actually put cost, households, and persons into their own columns in columns C, D, and E. So for every, so the, for, for the first row, you'll, your data is gonna look like this. It's gonna be California, October, 2018, the cost, households, and persons for that row. And this now is something that you can now pivot or set up perfectly for a pivot table. So if I select all this data, go to data, and then go to pivot table, you can see now I can add rows that are specific to, that are looking at different dimensions like state and period. Let's say I want to do state. And then for the values, I can say individual costs, households, or persons. And then I can also look at this by period. And this makes it much more easy to create a pivot table and do analysis. Another point to call out about why we wanted to move the metrics into their own columns over here from costs, households, and persons is in the original data set, if you pivot this data, you're actually mixing data types because you have costs, which is in dollars, and then households and persons are just regular numbers. So by having costs, households, and persons separated into their own columns, you're also separating the data types properly. So that's how you can organize your data set for the purposes of making this work for a pivot table. And more importantly, if this ever goes into a database, which it probably may, if your data set grows and grows over time, then this will be properly set up. 
I think an overall, uh, a good arch overarching rule is as new data comes in, if you're adding more data for October 2019 and November 2019, you don't want your data to grow right. You always want your data to grow down, which is what this new format allows you to do, which is new data new data comes in and new data gets added to the rows instead of the columns, which is what you have in the original structure of the data set. How do you actually get the data to look like this from this raw data set? You can use this function this function called transpose, which kind of gets you to where you need to go. So if I go to cell A1 of an empty spreadsheet and I say equals transpose, and I just select all the data in the original raw data set, hit enter, you'll notice that the transpose function kind of just flips everything onto another axis. So now we have the metric for state in column A, cost in California column B, column C is Illinois cost. So it just flips everything on its head and converts and just kind of like flips the axes. The problem is that, well, let's talk about the benefits. The benefits is are, are that the, the months are already kind of laid out in the right way we want, which is going from top to bottom. But the cost you'll notice is still split out by individual columns for each state. So you have to do a little bit of gymnastics to get the cost to kind of stack onto each other like this. So I might have to go copy the cost in one column and then for one state and then copy the cost for another column and another state and put them below each other. And it's gonna be some manual work and you can probably write a macro to do this, but our data set right now is not too big. So we can, we're can we able to do this manually and it's not too hard. But if you have to do this for all the states, then of course that's probably not a scalable solution for stacking your data on top of each other. In older versions of Excel, there was a pivot table wizard where you could actually select the data, go to the pivot table wizard, and the hack is you double click in the inside of the pivot table that's created, and it will automatically denormalize the data for you. Unfortunately, there's nothing like that for, for Google Sheets.